Hi, my name is Zachary Scott. I am one of the chief developers for Dice Wars, and that's the game that we're going to play today. Uh, so I have my colleagues here with me, and uh, they have never played this game before, so I'm going to be teaching uh, both them and you at the same time. Now, it's important to note that there's a few different variations of Dice Wars. Uh, there is a three to four player free-for-all. There's um, a 1v1, where each player commands two armies uh, that get opposed uh, to each other. Um, but we're going to be playing the 2v2 variant. So uh, my colleague here, Zach, and I will be on the team. And we will be uh, commanding our armies against Kaelin and Lauren's team. Uh, so, in Dice Wars, you employ both tactics and strategy to command your army to victory. Um, and your army is composed of these jumbo polyhedral dice here. So why don't you guys all go ahead, we'll go ahead and start setting up for the game. Uh, go ahead and jump your dice back. Now, there are three types of units in your army. There are basic units, uh, which are these six-sided dice. Uh, these are kind of your bread and butter troops. Uh, and there's a few different kinds. Uh, you have two uh, eight-sided dice, which are your advanced units. These are kind of your specialists, and they have two health each, uh, whereas your basic units have one. And then uh, every army gets one 12-sided die, which is your hero. Uh, these are very powerful units with three HP. Um, they can really make or break an army. However, the game is over when one of them dies, uh, so it's important to protect them as well as make use of them. Uh, you will see also included in the back are um, three regular numerical polyhedrals, uh, two d6s, which you roll uh, when attacking, defending, and um, using skills. Uh, and then there's also a single d20, uh, which is uh, for use in magic attacks, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, you also see there's these health chits here. Uh, these are for keeping track of the health of your troops. So um, the other thing that uh, I'll note is that each die has these icons. These represent which units are in your army. So let's go ahead and roll our armies. One thing that we designed Dice Wars um, when we kept in, in mind when designing Dice Wars is that we wanted no two games to be alike. So you can see here you've got this um, tiled map. Uh, this can be shuffled. Uh, your map doesn't even have to necessarily be a square. Um, it's also got uh, a whole other more advanced map called the Hinterlands on the bottom of it. For now we're using the kind of suggested first game basic map. Uh, now. You can see here we've rolled our armies, and the icons uh, on the top of the die uh, will correspond to the unit. So I got a lancer, an archer, a barbarian, a cavalier, a cleric, a witch, and the hero Vorn and Jorn. Now, uh, in order to uh, keep track of and inform yourself uh, of the abilities of your troops, uh, we have these cards here. So. What you do is you draw cards that match up with the icon that you rolled. Um, that icon is either in the top right of the card, or there's also uh, it appears on the back. So let's see here. So I rolled a cavalier, a barbarian, an archer, and a lancer. Uh, one other thing to note is that uh, within an army, you cannot have the same uh, advanced unit twice, so it looks like none of you do. And then uh, heroes have to be unique for the entire game, so it looks like Kaylin and I both rolled Vorn and Jorn. Uh, do you want to re-roll, or should I? I will re-roll. Okay. Okay, so you rolled Abby and Ellie. Alright. Okay, so you can see here that there's uh, only one set of hero cards. It's all we need. So let's see, I got Vorn and Jorn. Uh, Lauren, you got Thistle Crown the Manslayer. And then Kaylin, you rolled Adi and Ali, the Mischief Makers. And then, ooh, one of my favorites, Azrael. Okay. 
So yeah, you can see um, each hero has some pretty awesome abilities. Uh, Vorn and Jorn here can tear down walls and uh, mountains. Azrael can uh, raise units from the dead. Thistle Crown uh, can actually pick up units and hurl them at other units, uh, either as a, an, uh, an eclectic mode of transportation or to cause damage. Eddie and Ellie have some interesting abilities too. She can um, turn allies into kamikaze bomber units and uh, also switch positions of two allies uh, with her smoke bomb ability. So um, next we're going to place our armies. So. Uh, we'll go ahead and just um, place uh, your units on any one of the hex tiles. Normally there's a little bit of strategy involved in this, but since we're just kind of getting started here, we'll go ahead and uh, move forward with it. Okay, and then let's I'll go ahead and roll a d20 to determine who goes first once we're all placed. Okay, let's roll our d20s and see who goes first. Two, beat that. Twenty. <laughs> Dang. Okay, nobody's gonna beat that twenty, so. <laughs> yeah. Zach, you go ahead and go first. Alright. I put these, and, yeah, I put we'll, these on my units, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. So, um, these health chits are used to keep track of a unit's health. Um, your basic units only have one health each, so we don't need health chits on them. However, uh, the cl your advanced units have two health each, and then uh, your hero has three health. So, basically for the advanced units, on the second hit they die, and for the heroes, they die on the third hit. Okay, so um, we'll talk a little bit about um, gameplay flow. Uh, it's broken down into phases, so each player gets what's called a command phase. And uh, within that command phase, uh, you can activate two units and take turns with them. Now, these turns can be kind of mixed and, mixed and matched. Uh, you can split your movement. Um, you can uh, activate one unit. Um, to take an action, then move with the other unit, then move with the first unit, then take the second unit's action. It's kind of um, up to you. So, uh, one thing I'll talk about as well is uh, the information contained on these cards. So you can see here that there's four numbers. Uh, there is a red number corresponding to your unit's attack value and a blue number corresponding to their defense value. So when one unit attacks another, uh, each player rolls the 2d6, and then the attacking un uh, player adds the unit's attack value, and then the defending player adds the unit's defense value. Um, if the attacking player's uh, result is higher, then uh, the defending unit uh, loses 1 HP. There's also this orange number, which uh, corresponds to the range of the unit's attack. So you see the Lancer has a, a spear, so she can actually reach two hexes. Um, and then there's also uh, the green number, which is movement. That's the amount of hexes uh, that a unit can move in a given turn. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about terrain uh, once Zach here moves, um, because that does also affect movement. Uh, there's also this scroll here that contains uh, some information about um, the unit's abilities. Uh, there's the blue text, which corresponds to a trait. This is like a passive ab ability that is always turned on. Uh, and then the red text is a skill. Uh, now a skill uh, is an action that the unit can take. So in a unit's turn, you know, of course they can move, but they can also attack. Uh, if they can't do anything else or they need to defend themselves, they can guard. Uh, and then they can use, uh, also use a skill. Um, and skills work much like actions in that you roll 2d6 uh, to determine the result of the skill. Each skill has uh, at least two numbers corresponding to it. Um, there's the kind of basic main version of the skill, which you have to roll at least a 3 to activate. Uh, and then there's uh, always at least one higher version of the skill, more powerful version of the skill that you have to roll a higher result to achieve. 
Uh, so yeah, go ahead and take your turn, Zach. Let's see what you do. All right. So let's see. I might go for this here with the acolyte, which can move five spaces. Okay. Okay. Now, Zach here is heading for a city, and uh, that brings me to my next point, uh, which are the win conditions for Dice Wars. There's three ways to win. You can either kill an enemy hero, uh, you can kill, you can decimate an enemy's army, which means kill every unit except for their hero, or you um, and your teammate, if you have one, uh, can capture and hold on to at least three cities for three consecutive turns. Uh, each t consecutive turn that you hold three cities will net you one of these victory points. Now, cities are a little bit hard to get into in that they count as rough terrain, and I'll talk a little bit about terrain uh, now. So there's let's see, five kinds of rough terrain and three kinds of impassable terrain. You can see here that there's these regular plains um, but there's also forests, um, badlands, plateaus, and cities and ley lines. Now these actually cost two movement points to enter, but once you're within, like say a forest, once you're within a certain kind of terrain, you can move about with you can move within it normally. So it, it would cost two movement points to enter the city. Once you're within it, you can move around just spending one point uh, per hex. Uh, so it's a little it you know, costs a little bit more movement to get into these spaces, but they do confer some bonuses. Um, if, you have, if you have a ranged unit and they're on top of a plateau, they actually get plus one range to their weapon attack. Badlands grant plus one attack uh, to melee attackers. Uh, forests cannot be targeted uh, by ranged attacks. So, um, and then, of course, cities, once you capture the city, uh, which will... Um, once you capture a city uh, by put, placing a unit on the capital hex and spending an action to capture that city, uh, cities can grant some really awesome bonuses. So um, we'll see that uh, if and when my teammate here gets this city. Uh, there's also some impassable terrain. Um, water here can uh, cannot be moved on, but it, uh, you can target units across water. So like, let's say that you're unit has a gun or a bow and arrow, they can target across the, uh, the water. Uh, there's also mountains here which do block targeting. Um, and then, it do, it's not really actually a hex, but around the edges of the cities they have their city walls, which uh, also block targeting and cannot be uh, passed. So if you want to enter a city, you've got to get in through the city gates. Okay, so you... Um, We'll get back to Zach's turn here. So, Zach, you moved your acolyte towards the city. Yeah. Okay, and then you're ending your turn with movement, so you you could face towards your enemy. You see, yeah. uh, each die icon also has an arrow on top that determines facing. Um, so there's a couple rules that correspond to facing. Uh, one thing is that you do not want your back to the enemy because they can get an attack bonus uh, if they uh, can attack your unit from uh, directly from behind. And I get two units to move, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move as right. Okay. I'm going to go in for five. One, two, three. And you said it takes two movement to enter a forest? Correct. Okay. However, if you do enter that forest, which I think is a good idea, um, the uh, Kalen's archers and uh, Acolyte cannot target Azrael. Uh, so that's a defensive maneuver there. So now that I've moved him into this forest, mm -hmm. what else can I do with him? Um, it doesn't look like you can do much. Normally he would be able to reanimate a, a dead unit, but we've just started the game, so there are no uh, dead units for him to make use of, so uh, for now. Also, the Acolyte would have been able to enchant him and grant him, uh, you know, attack or defense, but uh, the um, forest that he's in blocks unit targeting. So uh, he's kind of, you know, in a safe zone against enemies, but also against, you know, um, potential benefits from uh, friendly units. So for now, I would just guard with both of them. 
uh, guarding is an action that a unit can take, um, and you know they commonly do so when uh, they don't have much else to do. And what it does is it, it temporarily grants them plus one defense, and then also if a unit passes by any of their front three facing hexes without um, actively addressing them, you know, trying to attack them or use a skill against them, uh, then uh, it, it automatically uh, auto triggers an attack from the guarding unit, um, which is called a counter strike. So I would, yeah, I would yeah. suggest guarding with both of them. Okay. I'll go ahead and guard with both. Yeah, so I could show off these handy dandy uh, tokens that we have here. This is just to help you remember what your unit might be doing. So uh, let's see, you're guarding with an acolyte. So your acolyte has two defense normally. Uh, with this chit right now, they have three. Uh, and that's just to help them remember. So here, if you want to put that on. Also, Azrael gets plus one defense. So one thing to note is that um, there's lots of different kinds of bonuses in Dice Wars, and um, when you give your unit, like let's say, plus two defense, uh, that lasts until the beginning of your next turn. Okay, so that concludes your turn, ZM. Uh, why don't you go ahead and take your turn, Kaylin? Alrighty. Well, first I'm going to go ahead and move my Lancer five spaces. Okay, cool. So yeah, one thing um, to note is that when you're moving your units, you can move through friendly units as long as you don't end your turn on them. Uh, you cannot do that with um, enemy units. So your Lancer is going to attack Azrael. So, okay. You would do that. Uh, well, I, I, assume, I assume you're attacking. Yes, I am. Okay, cool. So what you, yeah, what you guys do is um, we'll take your uh, D6s, both of them, and then go ahead and roll them. And Kaylin, you'll add the red number on your card, and um, uh, Zach, you add the blue number. And of course, you do have the plus one defense. Mm -hmm. All right. So what happens here? So 10 plus 3 is 13, and you got nine. 7 plus 2 is 9. Okay, so the attack fails, unfortunately. And uh, since, Kaylin, you don't have any movement or anything left, you're ending your turn with an attack, mm -hmm. uh, you'll have to end um, that Lancer's turn uh, facing the direction of the attack. Mm -hmm. If you end your turn with movement, you can, you know, face anywhere you want to. You, you choose that. Uh, if you end with um, any kind of action, then you have to end your turn facing that action. Okay. So you get another unit to activate. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and activate my Acolyte. Okay. And I'm going to move it three spaces. Alright. And I'm going to attack your Acolyte. Ooh! Acolyte on <laughs> Acolyte violence. <laughs> so yeah, something uh, I was going to bring up that you could have done is if you wanted to beef up that Lancer's attack, mm -hmm. you could have moved the Acolyte into place first and uh, enchanted the Lancer. See, mm -hmm. you, Acolyte has enchant, which grants, you could have granted the Lancer, you know, plus one or two attack. And then also the Lancer has a trait that says plus one attack per adjacent ally. So if you had moved the Acolyte first, mm -hmm. that Lancer would have had extra attack. So yeah, um, when uh, the probability spread for two D6s, you know, really clusters around seven, so even just one or two point uh, bonuses can really mean uh, a lot of difference. Um, all right, let's go ahead and resolve that attack. So this is a good time to talk about magic attacks, um, because the Acolyte um, does not have a red number. They have uh, the letter M there in place of it. Uh, there's also, so yeah, if your unit has a red M, uh, for their attack value, um, or uh, there's also some skills that reference magic attacks. Instead of rolling two d6s, uh, what you do is you roll a single d20, both units roll one d20, and uh, ignore all bonuses unless otherwise noted. Yeah. Okay, so this is useful when you're um, attacking uh, a unit with high defense. Um, so yeah, go ahead. 
Looks uh, like I uh -huh. have plus three defense. Yes, that's correct. So an Acolyte's trait uh, is called Studious, and they get plus three when defending against magic attacks. So go ahead. All right, here we go. Roll that d20. Three. 17 versus three, not good. Was he here? I think mm -hmm. I can't bump against him. OK, so um, even with that plus three defense, uh, it's not going to do it. So the Acolyte only has one health. It takes a hit and is dead. <laughs> At least now you have a, a dead unit for Ezra Eel to raise mm -hmm. from the dead later. Okay. And yeah, it looks like Azrael might be getting ganged up on here soon, so I gotta be gotta be careful. Alright, so that's the end of your turn, right, Caitlin? Yes, it is. Okay, go ahead, Lauren. Alright. Uh, I'm gonna send my barbarian into this first city closest to me. Uh, I have five movement, so one, two, three. Or five. I can't. Mm -hmm. I can't get quite into, uh, yeah, into the castle. But I can get it to get to the door. Yeah. And I'm just going to defend so that if anyone tries to confront me, okay, I will be ready. Okay. So yeah, you can go ahead and take one. Of those so little that's a plus together. one to defense. Correct. Okay. Then so, yeah, now he's ready to go. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'm also going to send Thistle Crown forth. Uh, so he's got four spaces, three, not enough to get up on the wall. On the plateau, yeah. Yeah, because uh, that's two movement, but mm -hmm. uh, I can also stand and wait as well. Fair enough. Uh, so I'm going to place my back and defend. Okay, cool. Um, and then is it still just plus one to defenses if I choose to defend? Or to... Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, you, if you're guarding, yeah, that's okay. plus one to defense. Uh, can you find a plus one? Yeah, it's kind of a big board. Okay. And that concludes your turn? And that's my turn. Yep. Okay, great. Let's see. What am I going to do? I'm going to first move my witch up. So let's see. She's got five movements. So one, two, three, four. And I'll put her right here. Okay, so the witch has a trait called Miasma, which has a range of three. Inflict minus one defense on all enemies in range. So we'll go ahead and give him a minus one. Oh, which with the plus one is <laughs> just going to cancel it out. Yeah. It negates it, yeah. Uh, and then she's going to use um, her attack is low, but she has a skill called Dark Elixir, which can either heal or remove health from a unit if I roll a 9 or higher. So I'm putting a lot on luck here. Okay. Oh, I rolled an 11. <laughs> I can remove one health from target unit. Guess which unit I'm going to remove one health from? <laughs> Barbarian. Correct. And, and he's now only he's got one health, so he is out. R.I.P. Okay. And then I'm going to move Vorn and Jorn forward. Oh, let's see here. Now that the road is clear, they have five movements. And yeah, it would cost uh, six to get that far. Mm -hmm. So he can stay there. And let's see, he's got siege, one, two, three. So yeah, can't attack very far. So he'll just guard and get plus one defense. And now it is your turn. So when it comes back around to my turn, I remove this plus one defense buff off Ezreal? Uh, correct, yeah. So any buffs or debuffs or enchantments or anything like that, um, they last for one turn. So, uh, or what, you know, basically one go around the table until it comes back to you. Uh, so if I take an action with the Lancer, mm -hmm. this Phalanx ability? Yeah, yeah, Phalanx. Um, if I move him, if I move both of these over here, mm -hmm. I can still move and then move and then action, action. Correct, yeah. You can awesome. kind of freestyle jazz your turn. <laughs> okay. Or well, move, action, move. I yeah, so I, I see what you're saying. So you want to get a, a unit adjacent to the Lancer before she attacks um, in order to take advantage of her failing ability. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try it. So. I can move five spaces, one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. Face those guys. And I have the Cavalier. Uh, I can move six. 
One, two, three, four. Ooh, this is going to be a good turn because not only does your Lancer have plus two attack right now because she has two adjacent allies, mm -hmm. she has two range. And when you have two range on a melee unit, uh, that they actually attack two hexes in a line. Uh, so she can attack both of these guys at once <laughs> at plus two attack. Aha. Savage. So, anything that your kids <laughs> can do. Let's see. I mean, or, yeah, your cat. Anything that your cavalier can do. Hmm. Oh, oh, the cavalier can. If I roll high on bravado. Uh, uh, he grants movement. Oh, he yeah, uh, he grants movement. So um, I mean, you could have her. You I could mean, have him do that at least, and then um, if your lancer uh, kills these units, she can actually move some more. Because she used all five of her movement, right? Mm-hmm. So, I should yeah. I should do that. Okay. Well, so, let's yeah. go ahead and do that. I'll do the Cavalier's ability. Okay, I so he's, yeah, these, right? right, you're using Bravado, you roll 2d6, and then you're determining if he can get the high roll or the low roll. So we're shooting for eight or higher. All right, here we Let's go. Let's do it. Nine. Nine, great. So um, a few things happen. Uh, in Bravado, uh, your Cavalier is sacrificing one defense until mm -hmm. his next turn, so we'll do, or no, I'm sorry, one defense, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, he gets plus three movement and grants an adjacent ally plus two movement. So I should just help remember. Here's a plus two. Plus three. All right. And so, he, and so these guys can both actually move some more now. Um, but yeah, you can wait to move until after this attack pops off. Okay, so it yeah. looks like that's what you're going to yep. do. So if I if I target the acolyte here, it, it goes will, through mm -hmm. the other one. Yeah. But let's say if I targeted him, it wouldn't target no, the acolyte. No, it would. She attacks any two hexes in a line. Ah. Mm -hmm. So oh. yeah, that's something you actually have to watch out for with the lancer because if you had an ally here and you attacked that, it would attack both. So it depends on which one I pick to attack. So friendly I, fire I, is on. So friendly fire is turned on. Okay. So yeah, basically yeah, you're just kind of targeting a line in any direction. And if that line would take you two through, through, you know, two hexes, you mm -hmm. pick which hex you're going through. Okay. Um, let's see. So if I'm rolling against Kaylin, uh, do I have to pick one of these units? Oh, for their defense? Mm -hmm. uh, good question. No, you're actually basically attacking both of them separately. Okay. So let's go ahead and roll for the Lancer, Lancer first. first. Okay, so you're attacking the Lancer first. So this is, uh, you've got plus two to her attack. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're adding four, and Kaylin, you're adding two. Okay. Six. six. Oh. Six. So you guys both rolled six, so it's kind of obvious what happens here. Uh, <laughs> Kaylin, your Lancer is dead. And then because now we're going to. the tie goes to. Well, th they both rolled six, but Kaylin added two defense, oh. and he, uh, Zach added four attack. Ah. Yeah. So we roll. But that is a good note. If there is a tied roll, tie goes to the runner. So um, if they're, you know, the attacking unit and the defending unit both rolled a six and their their bonuses were the same or whatever, uh, the attack would still go through because on a tie, the attacker gets the benefit. Okay. okay. Roll for that echo light. Nine. Nine. Five. Uh, let's see. So you're adding. So uh, need 13. You're adding four and you're adding two again. So yeah, definitely acolytes out Ooh. as well. Yes, Great please. turn. Okay, yeah. and then I can still Great move. Place. They can still move, yes. <laughs> so I have three more with the cavalier. You're really catching on to this, man. Yeah. One, two, three. The cavalier had only moved four, so you can actually move another one. Here. Oh, yeah. Do that. Four. And then the lancer just has two. Mm-hmm. So let's see, one, is that a witch? Yes. <laughs> I remember her. Miasma. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's what, three hexes away? Yeah. Yeah. Did I get, okay. So I'm going to move, okay, so two hexes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get two. What's his range? The Five archer? Five or four. Four? Four. four. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't matter where I go. Yeah. I'm just going to move here and 
Yeah. And since you're ending your and turns with movement, the they turn. can choose where they face. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, Kaylin. <laughs> Finish him. <laughs> Is it time to get some revenge here? <laughs> Please. Let's get it all out. All right. Yeah. So let's see, what can you do? I... You can... I'm going to activate my witch. So yeah, one thing um, Good idea. to note here is, Kablooey, did mm -hmm. you read that? You may sacrifice any non-hero ally at any time during its turn, so that you can even sacrifice her units. Mm -hmm. Uh, attack all units adjacent to it at two attacks. So uh, basically, even if that unit has already taken an action that turn, you could bomb it, you know, turn it into a bomb. So that's just something fun to keep in mind. But yeah, I think activating your witch is a good idea here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go ahead and move it three spaces. Okay. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> And then... So, yeah, they, if you wanted to, um, you want to use uh, the witch to cause damage, right? Yes, So you kind of have two options. The witch has a pretty weak attack. Mm -hmm. uh, it does have two range. So just like how his lancer attacked two things in a line, you could attack it. Um, the other thing that you could do is um, you could use Dark Elixir as well. See, Dark Elixir is a healing spell, but on the more powerful version, if you rolled a nine or higher, it actually removes uh, health, which is almost, it's like an attack that they don't get a chance to defend, uh, which is what I just used on Lauren. Mm -hmm. So you got a couple options here, it's up to you. Let's go ahead and I want to attack both of them. Okay, cool. In a line. Okay. I did on my last turn. <laughs> sure. Sure. So, so you want to roll for this guy first? Yes. So let's see. The Lancer has two defense, mm -hmm. um, and the Witch has one attack. So. Oh. Go for plus it. two versus plus one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh well, wait. Actually, the Witch also has Miasma, which inflicts minus one defense yes. on all enemies in range. So <laughs> this is a straight one versus one. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. So yeah, the odds are a little bit more even now. Yeah. Let's roll. Eleven. Ten. Oh my uh, gosh. Successfully defended. All right, now let's uh, use the Cavalier. The Cavalier already had uh, minus one defense, so it had one defense, so now because of the Witch, it has zero. So uh, you get you add one, you add zero for this. Attack. All right. All right. All right. Eight. 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 Nine. Versus, let's see, eight versus eight, and then, yeah, you're adding one, mm -hmm. and you got the regular roll, so... The Cavalier is dead. Yeah. <laughs> one. Now there you go. Okay, and um, that was your first uh, unit activation, so I believe you have another one, right? Yes, yes I do. <laughs> I, was, I think you, you don't have to whisper that one. What was your, oh, yeah. Yeah, what uh, was your suggestion? My suggestion was for your second movement or action. Uh, actually, don't move and have your archer take advantage Ooh. of the range and shoot the lancer. Yeah, because the archer yeah. has a range of four. It can shoot mm -hmm. over water, um, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, they can kind of stay protected and take a pot shot at the lancer. I mean, it's it's totally up to you. But... <laughs> All right, let's take a pot shot at the lancer. Okay, I like it. <laughs> Um, let's see, so Finish the Lancer him. has uh, <laughs> two defense right now, mm -hmm. um, and the Archer has two attack. Okay, let's go ahead and roll. Is that the wicked roll? Yep. Nine? Twelve. Wow. Oh. Lancer takes right. a hit. <laughs> hey, you guys just tore each other up. Okay, and um, if you want, you do have some movement uh, mm -hmm. left if you wanted to move the uh, Archer. I'll go ahead and move him like two spaces. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. And that's my turn. Okay. And okay. now it's Lauren's turn. All right. So I'm going to move my assassin. Ooh. Okay. And I'm going to ready Thistle Crown. Um, so assassin. Wait, what five. are you doing with Thistle Crown? So I'm going to move my assassin. So one, two, three, four. 
and Thistle oh. Crown is going to hurl. I see what you're doing. My oh, assassin. Nice. So yeah, uh, go ahead and read hurl for me if you would. Hurl uh, is a hurl an adjacent uh, unit onto target hex. If a unit mm -hmm. occupies the hex, knock it back and attack it to. Uh, uh, to uh, attack. To attack yeah. yeah. Okay. So hurl has a range of five. So this is a way basically. Uh, Thistle Crown picks up a unit and throws it f up to five hexes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Thistle Crown is going to hurl uh, my assassin into the uh, square of the city. Awesome. So that uh, the assassin can take the city. Okay. So um, you're moving with your assassin, not taking an action yet. You're holding yeah. back. Then you're using Thistle Crown to hurl it, and then you're going to use the assassin's action to take the city. Yes. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> let's let's make it happen. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and roll. To see, because Hurl can deal damage to the Hurled unit. Yeah. Uh, maybe the assassin doesn't land on its feet, so we'll see. <laughs> okay. So that's why you used your assassin, because they have two health. Yeah, the so assassin is hit, stronger. it wouldn't be a waste. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Okay, you rolled an eight. Eight, which is the Hurled unit takes no damage. Perfect. Okay, mm -hmm. so go ahead. If you want to play yeah. the action out. <laughs> Okay, great. <laughs> and now that the assassin is here, uh, landed like a cat on its feet, um, he's going to take the city. Okay, yes, yeah, so uh, you take a city by standing on its capital hex and mm -hmm. using an action. So when you take a city, uh, what you do is the cities are randomly assigned. The yeah. first time the city is claimed, you reach into that bag and pull out a wooden tile to see what kind of city you get. And I got Zenpalo. Okay, so go ahead and put some... Forest provides. Okay, so uh, you put the city hex on the capital mm -hmm. space to determine, you know, to denote for everybody. So uh, one important thing to note is that um, I can take this city from her if I want to. If I can get onto the capital hex and claim it for myself, then Zenpalo transfers to my ownership, but it stays the same city. We don't redraw it. Yeah. Uh, so Lauren, you get a card here to show you uh, what sort of cool stuff you get from Zempalo. Uh, so what does it say? All right, so the secluded refuge it grants plus one to defense to ally units in Zempalo and within two hexes of its walls. Grant this trait to all cities you or an ally control. So right, if so anyone gets a city, then that is also granted. Right, anybody on your team, if they get a city, uh, that basically anybody within two hexes, was it? Yes. Of the city walls, or within the city, uh, get plus one defense, so pretty yeah. good ability. And then the relic is defend against two attacks in one phase. Oh yeah, so we do have these um, relic triggers. Relics are an advanced role. You see, mm -hmm. uh, Dice Wars comes with like a, a smorgasbord of advanced rules, basically like, um, you know, a, um, what do you call it, uh, an expansion pack included in the base game. Uh, however, for the purposes of this game, we're just kind of teaching the basics, so uh, we, <laughs> no won't be use, yeah, we won't be using relics this time. Okay. Cool. Okay, so use your um, assassin's action. Yeah, um, so move. Okay, so I, I believe action. Thistle Crown does have some movement left. Yeah. So he hasn't moved at all. Right, I have not moved him yet, so I'm going to move... I'm gonna head your way. Okay. So one, two, oh, no, no. three, four. Okay. And I'm gonna face you and ready myself. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Uh, then I take it it's my turn, yes. right? Okay. Let's see here, what do I wanna do? Now, uh, Vorn and Jorn have a trait called demolition. When Vorn and Jorn are within siege range, siege range is, uh, siege is my skill and it has a range of three, so when they're within three hexes of a mountain or wall, it can be moved and targeted through. So, I'm within three hexes of this mountain, one, two, three, so I can move and target through it. So I'm going to go, which has five movement, one, whoops, two, Three. Now I am behind Thistle Crown, uh, and that no. grants me a back attack. So uh, if you are directly behind a unit and you attack it, uh, you your attack gets plus one uh, because I've snuck up on Thistle Crown successfully. In addition, um, I have my Miasma in effect, which means that. Uh, Thistle Crown gets minus one defense. So this, actually, that scrubbed 
at the yeah. beginning of your turn. So, yeah. Right. So minus one defense and plus one attack. So I've got two, and you've got one. one. So let's do this thing. So I'm adding two, and here you're adding one. Adding one. Ugh, bad roll. Nine. Uh, let's see. Uh, three, five. <laughs> Pointless. Yeah, okay. by some small miracle, right. uh, this lacrosse is So I was here. <laughs> three. Okay, so I'm actually going to move her. Let's see here. Three. She has got two movement left. She can't move through me, right? No. Gonna move her. One, two. Or nope, can't do that. One, two. There we <laughs> go. And then I'm gonna have her face uh thistle crown. <laughs> okay, so now I've got Vorn and Jorn. Um I'm gonna use them to take the city. So one, two, three. Alright. And one important thing to note, Lauren, is uh, these city walls are within siege range. Mm -hmm. um, so they can be moved and targeted through. That doesn't just apply to me. That applies to you as well. Yeah. So these city walls might as well not exist right <laughs> now. Um, I am going to use my action to take this city. Let's see what I get. I got Cordelith. Let's see what Cordelith does. Clockwork Rhythm. Grant plus one movement to ally units that begin their turn in Cordelith and within two hexes of its walls. Grant this trade to all ally, to all cities you are in ally control. So basically the same way you got plus one defense, I got plus one movement. Okay, and he's got five movements, so I'm gonna do Four, five. No, I'm going to keep him there. All right. So that ends my turn. Go ahead, Zach. So if I revive a unit as Reel, yeah, does that count as my second unit? If I if I no. move, move him and mm -hmm. revive, I get. So yeah, reanimate. Place a dead unit adjacent to Azrael and take a turn as this unit. It must attack a unit, then return to the grave. So basically, you can reanimate any dead unit of your choice. Mm -hmm. Well, it, you know, it, whether you get the low roll or the high roll uh, determines whether it has to be a basic unit or whether it can be any unit. Um, I think basic units are the only dead ones right now. Um, and so that whole unit's turn mm -hmm. counts as Azrael's action. So oh. yes, you do get to activate another unit. So you can move Azrael, um, reanimate a unit, uh, and then take a whole other unit action, uh, you know, using it, one of your uh, remaining units. Or vice versa, you can use reanimate and then move Azrael. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. So what, okay. do you, what do you got up your sleeve here? <laughs> Let's see. My witch can move five spaces, so I'm going to move her into position. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. I'm going to face the bridge here. Yeah, witch v. Witch. All right. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to activate Azrael's reanimate ability. Okay. So I have to roll three or higher. Mm -hmm. Okay, nine. yeah, you got a nine. So you can revive any unit. However, it looks like the only units available are um, basic units. All right, I'm going to revive the Lancer. Ugh. Place it right here. And then... Oh, that, that's going to be rough. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to do... Now, uh, one thing to note is Necrotic Rot. Reanimated units inflict minus one defense and minus one movement upon their attack targets. Okay. So she's also got minus one... De these guys have... Um, let's see, the Witch's Miasma is three. So one, two, three. Yep. So these guys have uh, minus one defense. This is another thing you can do. Uh, these tokens are just to help you remember, so we can actually put them on the dice themselves. Mm -hmm. So she's got minus one uh, defense for uh, the um, uh, for the uh, miasma, mm -hmm. right? But the um, but the reanimation also inflicts minus one defense and minus one movement. 
upon attack targets. So she's actually targeting both of these guys. So let's see here. So they have minus two defense. In addition, the Lancer has plus two attack. Um, and then they also have minus one movement, right? Mm -hmm. So that's just something to note for your turn, Kayla. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so when I attack with the Lancer, because it has two range, I can choose yeah, both of Yeah, basically these. you're targeting both of them. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here we go again. Which one go for first? Let's oh. go for... Let's go for that archer first. All right. Roll for him. Okay. Five. So five plus two. Um, well, actually, plus four is uh, nine. And then you got 11 mm -hmm. minus two is... Or, well, yeah, 11. Um, what's your... Which is defense? Uh, plus two. Okay, so 11 even, right? Uh, because you got minus, mm -hmm. or, or your archer's defenses, they're both two. Yeah. So basically, this knocks that out, so it's just whatever the naked roll is, right? Mm -hmm. So 11, so and the then, yeah, you got five, and um, the lancer has plus two, plus two, so nine. So yeah, you got a low roll, so that archer stays around. All right. Let's do so the witch. For the witch. Oh, Eight. Eight plus four is 12. Not gonna happen. <laughs> okay, so the witch takes the witch a hit, yeah. but the, it is not dead yet no. because it has two health. Okay, and then I still have <clears throat> an action with my witch. Um, Correct. So this attacks a unit, then it returns to the grave. Ah, uh, yes. Dead. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Um, so the witch, I'm gonna use dark elixir. I have to roll seven or higher. Mm hmm. Five. Okay, so you can only choose to heal one to target unit. I don't think that you have. No, only if I roll a seven or higher. Yeah. So, so I can't do anything if this Yeah, is. unless you want to heal her witch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. No. Uh, yeah, I don't Seems think you want to. Heal. That Seems so intuitive. Yeah. yeah. That but. didn't turn out the way I wanted. It. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So these guys have, plans. so that's your turn. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, did you want to move your witch at all? I did. Okay, go ahead. Oh, no, I moved it five spaces there. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. Have. Oh, yeah, you already did. Okay, My cool. turn is over. Okay, mm -hmm. so just remember, these guys have minus one movement each uh, for the duration of your turn, Kaylin. Alrighty. And it is now your turn. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm just going to move my witch. Okay. Right here. All right. Right in the face of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. And uh, what are you going to do? I'm going to go ahead and attack your witch. Well, here's something that you could do, Kaylin. Um, if you wanted to, you can move here mm -hmm. or here instead, and then you can attack both of them in a line. Oh, yeah. You should do that. Yeah, I should yeah, definitely that's, I mean, do that. I'm idea. definitely going to do that. Okay. So. Two movement? Yes. Oh, and then she's also blocking the entrance to that yes. city you now. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so she's facing this way. Yes. And then, so she inflicts minus one defense on her targets, mm -hmm. right? That's both correct. these guys? Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, so just remember, uh, Zach, to subtract one defense from each of uh, those guys. And then um, for your witch, Kaylin, uh, she attacks at one. Yes. Okay, let's do it. So which one are, is she, are you going to go for first? Mm, I'm going to go for a witch first. Okay. Six. Uh, ten. ten. Okay, so yeah, bonuses aside, that's going to work. Obviously, <laughs> obviously beats yeah. So the witch takes a hit, but is still alive. All right. Yeah, she's on one leg. And then we roll for... Uh, yes, your hero. For Azrael. Eight? Uh, so there you go, it's not going to happen. Okay, cool. That was rough. Yeah. All right, and then you have another unit action. Yes. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take this off now. <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. And she's all done. 
Mm. Um, you, know, you could do, let's see, he's got only three movement. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Ah, never mind. I was thinking you could maybe move him into the city, but he doesn't have enough movement for that. <laughs> I can go ahead and activate my archer, though, mm -hmm. and go up for his witch again. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do that. Okay. So I don't have to move. Okay, go ahead and roll the attack. Eight. Ah, oh, low rolls. Dang. Yep, didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, are you moving with the archer? Um, no, I'm going to stay. Okay, then yeah, you can go ahead and just take that off. Alrighty. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take these off too since... Well, actually, yeah, they're pretty much always turned on as long as that witch is in range, so yeah, we'll leave them on for now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that all of your... Oh, yeah. and since I didn't move, I get a guard then, right? For the archer? No, no. So guard is only guard is an action, okay. and so at, yeah, and so oh, when okay. the archer attacked, that was an action. Okay, so so I'll really, yeah, guard is is useful yeah. um, if uh, you, you don't have no if one it doesn't. Yeah, really, yeah. It's just like purely a defensive move. Okay. So. Okay. All right. I'm gonna move my uh, wizard in to the mm -hmm. fray uh, and kind of pull a similar. Move as I did last time. So, uh, wizard can move one, two, three, four, just in, uh, just adjacent to Thistle Crown. Okay. And Thistle Crown is going to throw my wizard into the mm. center hex uh, to attack your. Uh, I see. Born and Jorn. Okay. So um, it's a, it's go if it hits. So when you're hurling a unit, if it hits an enemy unit, it attacks them at two. Yes. Okay. So I can, it's a, so your first it's just a solid, mm -hmm. or yeah, like a plus two mm -hmm. to my roll. Okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> roll the three. So yeah. a three or higher, remove one HP from the hurled unit. So the wizard, go ahead and just remove one HP from your wizard. Okay. All right, and then where are you hurling the wizard? Uh, directly at Vorn and Jorn. Okay, and then if it hits him, it knocks him back, right? Yeah. So basically... It knocks him in the at direction. Two to, at two, um, two mm -hmm. attack. Correct. Yeah. All right. And then you're going to go ahead and um, attack me for two, basically. Yeah. So. All right, I got a seven. You Ooh, got a seven. seven. Yeah, tie attack. goes to the runner, yes. Yes. So, Warden <laughs> Jordan takes a hit. Not right. good for a hero to take damage. And two health. Right. Or one health. Mm -hmm. Down two, two. Okay. Um, now, did your wizard take an action yet? Um, no, because no. he uses Hurl. Right. Right, so he's just in there. Mm -hmm. So um, your wizard could take the city from me, they could attack uh, me again. Yeah, so, um, so I think I'm going to take the city from you. Okay, and uh, you don't have to pull a tile out of the back because you already have the city. Yeah. So Cordelith is now under your control. Yay! So Kaylin and Lauren have two cities. Yeah, so with, yeah, and then we have Clockwork Rhythm, which grants plus one to ally units that begin their turn in Cordelith and within two hexes of its walls. Grant this trade to all cities you or an ally control. So this also applies to, to Zavala, Zavala, Correct. Which is pretty sweet. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, and, and then, then, yeah, and now also you get the plus one defense from Secluded Refuge within Cordelith. Yeah. Um, so should I put that? If you want. It's basically, those tokens are to just help you keep track of it. Yeah. So. Cool. Um, so I have moved and actioned my mm -hmm. wizard. I have actioned um, Thistle Crown, but I haven't moved him. Correct. I don't know. I think I should move mm -hmm. um, because your witch is on my butt. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move. Uh, let's see. I think I'll just move over here uh, just to like maybe ready for all those folks. So. Okay. Stand at the cool. gate. I'm, I'm going to wait at right, the door. So he's facing there. Yeah. Okay, cool. And that's my turn. Great, great. Okay, so in that case, I'm going to move Vorn and Jorn here and attack you from behind. Because remember, I have demolition, which mm -hmm. can basically knocks down walls. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, God. So I'm getting a back <laughs> attack here. So I moved him there, but I'm also going to move, let's see, one, two, three. No, 
not in range. Trying to get, um, let me see here. My witch has five movement. One, two, three, four. Okay, yeah, so one, two, three, four. All right, and then I'm going to put the witch there, right? So I am going to start by attacking you with Ford and Jorn. Okay. <laughs> Um, he attacks at three, and he has plus one from the back attack, right? Yeah. So, so he's attacking four. at four. Now mm -hmm. let's talk about your defense. You get plus one from the uh, city bonus right. from Secluded Refuge, but you're also getting minus one from the Miasma. So it's, it's just, just whatever. an even yeah. roll. Yeah, so okay. you get plus two. Okay. Right? Yeah, plus so, two naturally. Yeah, so plus four versus plus two. Okay, I got a four, plus four is eight. I have six. Wait, no, No, you ten. got eight plus ten. Okay, so you successfully defended. I defended. Yes. Whew. I'm also going to attack with my um, uh, witch. Here. Okay. Okay, so um, let's see here. She was here. And is she doing a magic attack, so is that a d20? No, or she's not doing a magic okay. attack. I'm actually going to, instead of having her attack, I'm going to have her use Dark Elixir. Okay. So that's just on me. Yeah. All right, four. So I get the um, low version, which means <laughs> I cannot remove health, but I can heal health. So I'm going to heal one back to Vorn and Jorn. Nice. Okay. And then I'm going to end my turn by uh, moving Vorn and Jorn back. So he only moved one here. So I'm going to move him. One, two, three, four five. Okay, so uh, one, two, three. So basically, and these walls are, are you know, uh, broken through, but these walls are solid. Okay. Cool. Uh, that's my turn. All right. I'm kind of backing him into a corner to try to keep him safe. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay, so let's see what am I going to do. I can get rid of that witch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At this point, you guys probably just destroy each other's armies. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm going to do, let's see, she moves five spaces. You've also got a wizard that you might be able to use, too. Oh, yeah. You also would get so neg yeah. negative one from my witch uh -huh. as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move one, two, three. And back attack your witch. Yep. Let's roll on it. All right. Okay. So yeah, you get, basically get minus one from defense. So mm -hmm. she's got two defense. So she, mm -hmm. you add one, okay. and then you get plus one to the attack. So you add two. Okay. Eight. Okay. Ten. Ten. Eleven. So eight plus two is ten. So it's defended. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Oh, you could see what else. You know what you could do? You could move Azrael here, and then revive a Lancer, and then the Lancer would have two adjacent that allies. That is a back attack, too. No, because where was the where'd the witch start at? The witch was here. So she yes. moved one, two, three. So she's got one, uh, two movement left. She could move out of the way, and then give him a uh, back attack. So like, let's see, you move your witch here, okay, for example. Mm -hmm. You move Azrael into position here. Revive a Lancer. Lancer has back attack plus uh, the necrotic rot plus two adjacent allies. That sounds really good. <laughs> okay. So let's so, see. Yeah, so I think I might actually move the witch closer to move in on the archer. And okay. then I'm going to... Well, I, he needs to be here to get the back attack and the two adjacent allies. Oh, okay. So, so it's me, adjacent allies. Let's yeah. go back there. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to do that okay. and move her back here. And then what I'll end up doing is moving one, two, three. Mm -hmm. And then I'll roll for the yeah. yeah. All right, ten. So you can revive any unit. I don't think, uh, yeah, I think it's still just basic something? units, yeah. Oh, uh, all right. Well, we'll revive a Lancer again. Okay. Now there's plus two for Yeah, for the adjacent allies, plus 
Uh, and then also plus one for a back attack. So you're adding two, three, four, five. Oh. Okay, and then you're adding, <laughs> you get minus one for Yikes. the miasma, yeah. and then also minus one for the necrotic rot. So, it's so yeah, you get minus two. Her defense is only two, so you add nothing. Yes. Okay. All right. Make it roll. So good strat five. good use that of strategy. That was really good. Ten. Ten. Seven. That's a lot. All right, yeah, she definitely takes a hit. Oh, yeah. yeah. The last She's only got one health, dead. too. Dead. Oh, no. So now you can reanimate her. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and yeah. then this, this Lancer would die. Yeah, then the Lancer returns to the ground. Okay, okay. and then I have... Whew. Let's see, what was that? I have... She had move, um, three The more witch had movement left. left. Yeah, you got... I have um, three more movement left? Uh, yeah. Okay, so one, two, back here to block the city. And then, let's see, Ezreal had five, so I have two more left from him. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, I'm going to, I'm going to actually move in closer here. Okay. And then I Ooh, will. Ooh, daring. I will end my turn. <laughs> okay. What are you doing, Kaylin? What are you thinking about? Mm -hmm. let's I think you might, yeah, you know what you could do is, um, you could, let's see, you could use smoke bomb, you could use Louie. I kind of want to use Louie. You, you want to try it out? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, so what I would do is attack with a unit first and okay. then use Kablooey. Okay. So. That way you can get the regular attack in. I mean, I should just go ahead and attack with my archer. Yeah, well, your, yeah, your archer can get through the hero yeah. and the. Mm -hmm. um, which, so, so I can go for both of them. Yeah. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna attack with my archer. Okay, and who are you attacking? I'm gonna attack that witch first. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, so Kaylin, you rolled a six mm -hmm. um, plus two, mm -hmm. so that's eight, and then you rolled uh, Zach a five plus two that is seven. So not gonna cut it. So your witch takes a hit. Mm. Right. Oh, she only dead. had one health left too. Oh, so she was on her last as leg. Well. <laughs> okay. Yep. Um, and then what else are you gonna do, Caitlin? Mm. Well, I can still attack his hero with my archer. Uh, well, the archer just attacked. That's true. Well, doesn't it go through it goes both? Through both? No. Oh, okay. oh. No, no, no. Only, Only melee for... units uh, oh. with multiple range can okay. do that. that makes yeah. Sense. So it, this the archer is um, has what's called an arc attack, mm -hmm. and um, oh, basically that means that it can go. It goes sense. like that. It takes yeah. that kind of path. Okay. Whereas a witch had a you know a pole arm which goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. So yeah, you can move with your archer, uh, and then you can also activate another unit. Uh, did, did you say you wanted to use Kablooey? I really want to use Kablooey. Okay, well then, yeah, so you're going to sacrifice your archer yes. mm -hmm. to attack uh, all units adjacent to that archer at two. So you're attacking Azrael. So all I right. can hear it. No. You don't move that. No, no, she does, uh, so they don't move. So there. basically, Kablooey, um, go ahead and read it for me. You may sacrifice any non-hero ally at any time during its turn. Attack all units adjacent to it. Uh, to attack. So imagine this archer exploding and attacking every unit adjacent. <laughs> ah. so you've got the one there. Okay. Yeah. So it explodes and then uh, Azrael gets caught in the blast. Let's see how he does. So he's attacking at two and um, Azrael has two defense. So this is basically whatever shows up on the dice. All right. All right. You ready? Yeah. Nine. Okay, you got a six and you got a nine. Oh, uh, Azrael yes. escaped the blast. Yes. Okay. Jeez. So you, uh, Kablooey is a passive trait, so, uh, yeah, you can do that. So you actually can activate one other unit. Mm. What are you doing? I would just keep going after him. Yeah, that's what uh, I was His hero, his hero, hero is pretty, hero. yeah. Yeah. His hero is pretty, uh, vulnerable right now. Oh, I'll just go ahead and move my hero up against his hero. Yeah. Okay. That's what I would do. <laughs> Moving three, yeah, right in front of you. Okay, and then, and then I'm uh, gonna attack. Yep. With smoke bomb. All right. Yeah. So actually, if you wanted to, you wouldn't necessarily have to um, 
move right up mm -hmm. because they have a range of three, so they could attack from where they are. No, I'm fine with moving. Okay, right fine. Because <laughs> <laughs> right. that way, after like next move, you can go into the city mm -hmm. well, or mm -hmm. get move that way. Sure, sure. Yeah. So yeah, just letting you if know, you, you have the option that she does have some range. But go ahead and roll the attack. So. All right. Eddie and Ellie have two attack, and mm -hmm. Ezreal has two defense, so it's basically what shows up on the dice. Seven versus nine. nine. Ah, Ooh. he's defending. Yeah. Not rolling well. Okay. <laughs> All right, now it's your turn, Laura. All what right. are you doing? Uh, so my, um, my paladin is coming for your witch. Okay. So that's only two movement uh, out of my five, and I'm going to... Martyrdom, you. Ah, oh, you <laughs> the Paladin's martyrdom skill. Okay, yeah. go ahead and roll the dice. So that's, um, yeah, let's see if it. So the Paladin sacrifices three defense yeah. uh, as part of this. So basically, they're very vulnerable in the next turn. Yeah, and is there a plus? What it is is they sacrifice three defense, and on the low roll, they magic attack me. Okay. On the high roll, they can just remove one HP. Okay. So six. six. Okay, so you're doing a magic attack. Magic attack target unit. Against the witch? Yeah, against your witch. Okay, let's see. So okay. is that a... What is... Oh, is magic a um, Yeah, magic attack uh, ignores all other bonuses unless okay. it says a magic attack bonus. So like the acolyte and the wizard okay. do have magic attack bonuses, but they're very rare. Okay. And then we just use whatever's on the dice. So okay. it's got... Oh, 17 versus 15. Yeah. So my witch takes a hit. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, uh, so your paladin's got some movement left. You got a wizard. Yeah, um, I can't. I can't move through your witch, so I might just go back. Well, I don't know. I'm gonna send uh, Thistle Crown over. Um, I'm going to move you, my paladin, I have three more, so one, two, three. Oh, I see what you're doing. And ready, mm -hmm. ready myself for the next turn. Yeah, you're also kind of blocking me in this mm -hmm. movement. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and so now I'm going to just move to the bridge okay. and defend. Okay. So, you're guarding, so he's got plus, he's within two X's of the wall, mm -hmm. so he's got plus two defense right now. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. There you go. Or did, yeah, we can just put him on well, the Well, let's side. put it on. Sure. Yeah. So I don't forget. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Go. All right. Let's see here. I'm going to move my cavalry. Okay, I'm going to move my Lancer, five, and she's at the ready, um, and then she has not acted yet. I'm going to attack with my Archer. Mm. And you so have a they, bonus for being on higher ground? Um, he gets uh, extra range. Oh, okay. So I'm going to um, attack for two, and then... Uh, Thistle Crown has two defense, so this is just, oh, what, Thistle Crown oh, has four. plus two defense, so yeah, two versus four, so I gotta be pretty lucky to pop this off, Ooh. and I am not lucky at all. Doesn't even oh. no, <laughs> yeah. Okay, but then I'm moving no my good. archer here so that I can get an extra bonus. Okay. So, um, the Lancer has, uh, plus one to the attack, um, Okay, yeah. So I am attacking with the Lancer as well. I still have and a plus four. Yeah, I'm attacking uh, for three. Okay. Ugh, bad rolls. Terrible rolls. <laughs> okay, so I was real unlucky that time. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Zia. Go ahead, Zach. Okay, um, let's see what I should do here. Uh, I'm going to move some of my other units for backup. So I'm going to move the archer in. One, two, three, four. And what I'm going to do is... 
Oh, you should attack Eddie and Ellie, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, do it. And I have two attacks, so it makes it 11. Yeah, it's a high enough roll. Yeah. It's definitely going to hit. You, you okay, me. Abby and Ellie takes a hit. Yeah. All right, and then let's see. Hmm. Yeah, you could use your wizard. You could use Azrael. Maybe back him up and then revive like a oh, Lancer. Wait a minute. I see what I can do. Or a witch or something. Um, I will move in my wizard, because okay. I need backup desperately. One, two, three, four spaces. Uh -huh. um, and then meteor. Okay. So magic attack, target hex, and attack all units adjacent to it at one. Uh -huh. So I'd have to roll a five to activate that. Yeah, so which so hex? I imagine you would be uh, targeting like this yes. hex, so that yeah. you're not, because otherwise you get friendly fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so let's roll to see what kind of attack you get. Six. Okay, so you're getting magic attack, target hex, and attack all units adjacent to it at one. So if you you could either magic attack this and then take the risk and attack your own guy at, at only, but only at one, or you can magic attack like a a side hex and then attack him at one without risk. I'd rather do the side hex. Okay. This one here. Okay, so. This empty hex gets magic attacked. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, and then this hex is going to take an attack at one. So you're attacking uh, Addy and Ellie at one, mm -hmm. and they have two defense. So go ahead and roll your dice. Uh, you add one, and then um, Kaylin, you add two. Yes. Five. Wow. Three, two. Oh, it's. Nine. Yep, de defended. Yes. Oh. All right. <laughs> and now it's Kaylin's turn. So what are you doing, mm. Kaylin? I'm going to go ahead and activate my alchemist. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what is your alchemist going to do? I'm going to move it three spaces here. Mm -hmm. So are you going with a ranged attack? Or are you going to use uh, mutate? I'm going to go with a ranged attack. Ah, uh, okay. And go after his archer. Okay. One thing to note um, is that if you want to, if you wanted to attack the uh, hero, you can attack through your own guys. Oh. Yeah. Just assume they duck. <laughs> I did not know that. So I mean, it's up to you though. If you want to attack the archer, go for it. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. Cool. I'm attacking your hero. Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. So the alchemist is uh, using a magic attack, so yes, you do not right. roll d6, so oh, yeah. d20s. instead magic you guys roll d20s and do not add any bonuses. Right. Here we go. One! One! Oh, nine. nine! Azrael takes a hit. Ouch. Whoa, baby! I'll just revive a okay. witch and heal. <laughs> okay, now uh, what else are you going to do? Alright, then I'm going to go ahead and use my hero and attack. Okay, so Eddie and Ellie uh, have a gun attack, mm -hmm. so they got their slingshots. So they're attacking at two, <laughs> two versus two, so this is just going to be uh, the naked roll. Go for right, it. Here we go. Seven. Oh, that sucked. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. That was a bad okay. Yeah. All right. So, is that your turn? Are you adding any movement? Nope, that's okay, it. Okay, cool. All right, Lauren, what do you got? All right, so I'm going to send my archer in. Uh, just as close as I need to be. Mm -hmm. uh, so within three hexes of your hero, Forn and Jorn. Mm -hmm. uh, and my archer is going to shoot. Uh, Forn and Jorn? Forn and Jorn, yeah. Okay. Um, so Forn and Jorn have two defense. Your mm -hmm. archer has two attack. Yeah. Okay. So two on two. Okay, seven? A seven. Okay, oh, Ty goes, yep, goes to the runner, so Foreman Jordan takes a hit. Um, and then I think I'm actually going to use Arc Lightning from the wizard, uh, mm -hmm. from within the uh, walls of the I'm castle. these guys are all lined up. Are, are you using it at, at, at my hero? Yeah, at your hero. Okay, so let's go ahead and read Arc Lightning real quick. Uh, when this skill damages a unit, magic attack the nearest unit within three hexes of it. Subtract one from the roll for each subsequent magic attack. Uh -huh. So at plus three, I get magic attack target unit, and uh, plus eight, I gain plus three to magic rolls and magic attack target unit. Correct. 
Okay. So this is a... No. So, the, your, so arc lightning is basically starting with a magic attack mm -hmm. on Vorn and Jord. Yeah. And then if it damages Vorn and Jord, it will magic attack the nearest unit. And if it damages that unit, it will magic attack the nearest unit again from that and just keep moving out. Right. Okay, let's do it. So I roll my 2d6s first. Yeah, um, to determine what happens. To determine, to, yeah. Yeah, this, how strong the skill is. And there's no bonus plus... No. That, right? no, not when you're rolling for a skill. Seven. Okay, so you got the low version. So, I guess so you're just one. magic attacking uh, Vorn and Jordan. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then, so that's just a d20. I rolled a three. three. Beat that. <laughs> three! <laughs> Lucky for you, Ty goes to the Yeah, like, luckily I'm okay. the aggressor, so... So you, were ma you magic attacked Morton Jory, he takes a hit, he's down to one, not looking good. Now, he di he got damaged, so yeah. magic attacks the nearest unit, which yeah. is your paladin. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and roll against yourself. <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and roll for your paladin, if that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> sure, All right. go for it. Alright, your paladin got a 14. Now let's see. Okay. Since you're attacking your own guy. Yeah. <laughs> your paladin dies. Oh no. And got damaged. And the next nearest unit is your own wizard. Yeah. Okay. So, so that if you, you want to roll for my Sure. Now your wizard does get plus three defense against yeah. magic attack. And then it, it's a subtract one from the roll for each subsequent magic attack. Oh, so, so on that one the tie goes to, went to the runner too. So. Yeah, it would have been mine anyway. Uh -huh. So now you subtract two. So Yeah, um, so now I have to subtract two. Okay, so I'll roll defending. Uh, as your wizard, and I add three, and then you subtract two. Okay. A one. Eleven. Wizard took a hit. <laughs> so the wizard's dead, but the ma but the arc lightning still goes. Yeah. Oh. The oh next one is the. Uh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> the next one what is, have I done? I, uh, <laughs> the next one is my witch. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to subtract three now. Yeah. Okay. And. <laughs> All right, nineteen. That should hopefully it stops. Geez. That's it. It, will ha it has to. No, nineteen. <laughs> Sixteen. Okay. Yeah, that's where it stops. Whew. <laughs> All right, that was painful for everyone. Yep. <laughs> All right. I uh, think you still did. I oh yeah, that was no, that was both turns. So, oh okay, yeah. yeah. So your wizard killed himself in his own. Well, attack. I didn't. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You, yeah, I'm, you arched. Yeah, I'm, you archered. Okay, yeah, that's it for me. Whew. Okay. <laughs> All right, so. I made some mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. I'm going to move with my Lancer over here. Okay. And then I'm going to move my Witch up here. And so you get plus one defense for being near your city. Mm -hmm. However, uh, you get minus one defense for the Witch. Yeah, so, it's so just a that'll just roll. cancel out. Yeah, and then he gets plus one for the back attack and plus one for an ally. Um, so you're adding two for defense, and mm -hmm. I'm adding four for attack. Okay. Eleven plus fifteen. Okay. Yep. Thistlecrown's taking a hit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's see what else can I do. Let's see the cleric. And I moved my witch, so she's got to attack. So I'm going to go ahead and have her. Let's see, do I like her chances or not? Uh, I see what I'm going to do. The Lance actually has extra movement, so I'm going to move him back here, and then I'm going to move the witch into position so she can take advantage of the back attack. Um, okay, so this is. She gets plus one to her attack <coughs> for the back attack, and her attack is already one. Mm -hmm. And then um, you've got uh, two. Two. Yeah. Okay, so two v two. Uh, so it's basically, or no, minus one for the miasma. So, oh, so I get, I have I have one over you. Basically. Okay. So I'm. We'll just I'll add one, and you add nothing. Okay. Five. Seven. Seven. Okay. So yeah, you defended that one. Whew. Okay, your turn, <laughs> Zach. Oh, okay, this one's gonna be a doozy. Yeah. We're getting towards the end of it. <laughs> this may it's be like, the end here. So, so let's see. The wizard has four movement. 
I'm going to use two to go into this forest. Mm -hmm. um, I will move Azriel back one, and then uh, I'm going to activate Reanimate. Mm -hmm. Let's see what I get. Yes, four. So I'm going to reanimate the Lancer for the third time. Yeah, yeah you're <laughs> spamming that Lancer. That's huh? your OP. All right, and she gets plus three, three. because there are three adjacent allies. Yeah, and, and then, she has yeah, two because range. of Necrotic Rot, Addy and Ellie get minus one defense. So I'm you're going adding one, forward. and you're adding five. Five. Oh my gosh. Here we go. That's disgusting. So yeah, as you can see, as you can see these bonuses are really important. Twelve. Plus that, five? That definitely one hits. Thing. Yeah. That yeah. definitely hits. So I get hits. seventeen. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Painful. Okay, okay so well, Abby and Ellie take another hit. Yeah, they do. Does, uh, does my unit die immediately after the attack or after my turn ends? They um, attack a unit, then they return to the grave. So yes, they die after, the, after okay. the attack. Good. Okay, so my wizard has used two movement. Mm -hmm. So yeah, your uh, wizard. See. Oh, so yeah, uh, I see what you're going to do. So it'll be here. three movement total. Uh -huh. And then what I'm going to do is use meteor. Ah, uh, so he's casting his meteor spell. Jeez. Okay, so go ahead and uh, roll to see what happens with the ability. Nine. Okay, so this might be it. Uh, you're going to magic attack her hero, and then all un all hexes adjacent to it, so also the alchemist. But really, the star of the show is Addy and Ellie at one health. Go ahead and do this magic attack. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Eleven. Eleven. Ah, oh, tie goes to the runner. I oh am my sorry, God. Katie. Boom. Addy and Ellie are dead, oh and we win the game. Yes. Yes. <laughs> nice. So yeah, that concludes our uh, learning game of Dice Wars. As you can see, we really designed the game with um, chance in mind. Uh, you know, you can certainly use strategy and tactics to guide your forces, and um, you can definitely influence uh, your chances, you know, as we saw with these Lancer bonuses on these attacks. Um, however, um, no two games are going to be alike. You know, uh, we've got the shuffled map tiles, we've got randomly determined armies, um, and uh, there's also lots of other um, features that you can add to the game piecemeal. Um, there are ancient relics that you can uncover that grant, you know, very powerful bonuses. Uh, there are veteran advanced units. When they notch a kill on their belt, they can uh, actually upgrade and get better versions of their powers. Uh, there are ways to make the game go shorter or longer. It's very customizable, and uh, you know each game is very fresh. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to thank you guys for playing. Thanks All right. For having us. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm.